Justina Machado from One Day at a Time is now tackling the horror genre in a remake of the off-Broadway show and subsequent podcast Empanada Loca. Let's talk about Prime Video's The Horror of Dolores Roach. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my TV review for the first and now only season of The Horror of Dolores Roach. This is on Prime Video. It uh, streamed a few months ago, but uh, recently it was not renewed for season two. So we're going to get uh, the 10 episodes that we have, or eight episodes rather, uh, that we have now. And uh, that will be, you know, the, the only run of this show, I guess. But uh, I understand the podcast had a couple of seasons. Um, so there were you know, more avenues with the storyline. But I will say I watched this whole thing and uh, I do think it is a, a fairly self-contained uh, story. Yes, there are other places to go with uh, the characters and, and, and the stories, but um, there weren't really that many like loose ends uh, by the end of this season. Um, so I, I think you could watch it as a complete, you know, eight episode sort of mini series and uh, be satisfied with it in that regard. Yes, we could have gotten more seasons, um, but I think it ends, you know, just fine. And uh, like I mentioned, this is based on an off-Broadway show as well, which was a one woman show from Daphne Rubin Vega, who was part of the Rent cast. Uh, I think she actually was original cast of Rent, but that's certainly where she made her name. Um, and she's an executive producer here, so she she definitely has been involved, um, you know, with that. But anyway, before I, I talk any more about the show, let me welcome you into Dan Reviews. So thank you for finding this video. We do movie and TV reviews here on the channel, and just about every day, uh, I do try to post something new. So there's always a ton of stuff to check out. You can uh, click that subscribe button, click that like button, uh, comment down below. All that stuff, of course, helps the channel out. Uh, but you can also check out the playlist on the homepage because, um, you know, I know I post a lot of things, and maybe, uh, you know, all all of them are not uh, right up your alley, so you can check out, uh, you know, the movie reviews or the TV reviews or some of my specialty stuff uh, in playlists on the homepage as well. All right, so let's talk about this show, Justina Machado. Let's talk about her, actually, first, uh, because she is the star of this. Dolores Roach is who she plays, um, and... She, uh, you know, kind of broke out for me with One Day at a Time. I don't remember really seeing her uh, before that. And uh, that was sort of unceremoniously canceled by Netflix after a few really great seasons. Um, it shifted over to pop for like half a season. Um, but then COVID hit and then, you know, pop sort of decided not to do scripted shows anymore. So I, I don't know if I've seen her since One Day at a Time uh, was canceled. She may have popped up in something I'm not remembering, but uh, but I really liked her on there. And she proved certainly that she could do comedy, uh, but also some dramatic elements there as well. And uh, she sort of leans on both of those things um, in addition to, you know, a little bit of action. And um, yes, there's a horror element as well with this show. So, um, you know, a lot of different things going on here uh, with the horror of Dolores Roach. And this was produced by uh, not only Daphne Rubin Vega uh, from Rent, but Jason Blum from Blumhouse. Um, and he and the, the Amazon people have had a nice relationship the last few years. Um, every October, we get a few Blumhouse exclusive Amazon horror movies. Um, I Last year, I don't know if they did any, but for a few years anyway, they were doing like one every week or something. So uh, they obviously have a nice relationship. And this is, um, you know, definitely horror based. Uh, but like I said, it, it's a lot of other things going on here too. So the character of uh, Dolores, is uh, someone who has just gotten out of prison for a 16-year sentence for uh, possession of marijuana. Uh, and we explore that a little bit um, in the first couple of episodes. And she really um, has no idea what to do with herself after she gets out. Um, the only place she even can think of is her old apartment. Uh, her boyfriend has you know, long since moved away. The whole area has been gentrified, so she doesn't really know you know, uh, where to go, but she sees this restaurant she's familiar with, Empanada Loca. She spent a ton of time there. Um, and the uh, now owner, it used to be his father, but uh, the father has passed. So now Luis uh, Batista is the owner. He's played by Alejandro Hernandez. And so the two of them sort of, um, you know, rekindle a, a friendship of sorts. Um, you know, he lets her stay there. And then um, some things start happening. Uh, that I, I don't think we'll go into uh, for, for spoilers. And in fact, I'm not even going to tell you anybody else really that, that's in this because there are a few other famous uh, names and faces that pop up for an episode or two. But 
Um, I think it would be more fun, you know, just to see who, who's in it um, as they pop up. So I, I think we'll leave the, the, the plot schematics there. Um, but the Dolores Roach character, uh, loosely based on Sweeney Todd. Of course, we've seen so many iterations of that over the years, uh, be it on the stage or the Johnny Depp version. Um, but this uh, Dolores Roach character, a little bit inspired by uh, that Sweeney Todd. And we have not yet really seen that character um, as interpreted by a woman so it's an interesting um you know sort of juxtaposition to the Sweeney Todd we kind of know um but I really uh like this show in many areas I think it is trying to do too much uh at once and in fact uh it, it, it sort of ramps up as we go along like the first couple episodes we're really getting to know the characters getting to um see you know what kind of relationship Dolores and Luis had sort of as as friends um you know or companions back in the day um rekindling some of her old associations perhaps um but as it goes on we get more into the other aspects including the horror I would say in maybe season or episode three or so um and yeah there's there's certainly uh some some dark comedic elements um really uh some lifelike um scenes I guess and situations I can say without really going f further with that but uh you know the the set designers and the and the um uh, you know, the, the effects department, I think, uh, really did their job uh, when they needed to in some of these episodes. Um, but it also tries to go dramatic. And when it's focusing on uh, Dolores herself and sort of her plight, um, you know, being in jail and um, sort of trying to track down her ex and like that, that sort of stuff is interesting. But um, as we move forward with like the the horror themed episodes and stuff um there's a really really sort of i thought bizarre dramatic uh breakdown by one of the other characters in it might be the last episode it might be in the finale or the second to last episode um and it seemed a little bit out of place for sort of what we were ramping up to and also we don't spend enough time on it so like either let's focus on this uh, you know incident and, and this sort of dramatic moment or, you know, let's just cut it out completely. Um, you know, it may give us some more insight into a particular character, but I just don't think it quite landed with uh, the emotional stakes uh, that the creators wanted it to. So um, it's a little bit of a mixed bag tonally, um, you know, and with the mixing of the, of the genres. But boy, you know, uh, Machado just kills this role. She is so great as Dolores Roach. I am so excited to see what she's going to do um, with her career now moving forward because now she's been in, you know, a, a few high profile projects um, and she's proven that she can do a lot of different genres pretty well. Um, and she really, really holds this thing uh, together. Um, you know, I, obviously I didn't see the, the Off-Broadway show. I didn't listen to the podcast. Um, so I don't know how it necessarily compares in contrast to any of that. But I thought she did really a great job. So um, a, a little bit tonally mixed uh, for me, unfortunately. But I leave the horror of Dolores Roach with a B. And you can check out uh, what is now the only season, all eight episodes streaming on Amazon Prime. All right. Thank you so much for watching Dan Reviews It. I'll see you next time. Bye.